Hey, welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this large basket stamp. I started doing this last year after seeing a few years of many, many craftsmen out there tooling this type of pattern. And I thought it was just a really, really nice um, a geometric style, uh, uh, probably a quick addition to any kind of tooling pattern to kind of complement some floral. I've always really liked it, just never took the time to learn how to do it. I kind of had an idea of how to do it, but I never really sat down and did it. So last year we did a saddle. Um, if you've seen our um, our full saddle build video where we did a time lapse of an entire saddle being built from cut bench all the way to being boxed up. Um, you can go back and watch that video. I'll put a link down in the description. And on that saddle, I did this type of tooling. I had already tooled it some on some gun slings and some wallets and some small items. And I just really like it. I think it's really pretty. I think it's kind of contemporary looking. Um, and customers seem to really gravitate towards this type of pattern. So in this quick video, I'm just going to show you how to do this. It's very simple. It's not very hard. You don't need any special geometric stamps or anything to do this. And uh, we'll go over that and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so we're going to put that large basket stamp on this little bifold wallet. I've done a number of these little bifold wallets um, that we make with this large basket stamp tooling on there, and they always sell. They're very popular. So we're going to go ahead and do one for this video on that. The first thing you're going to need is either a stylus or a pencil. You can use whichever one you want. And then I like to use... Uh, this little straight edge. Um, I think some people may call this a gauge or something like that. It's a draftsman's tool, but these are really handy to have on the bench. We've talked about these before in some other videos, but I just use one of these because of the width. Um, the width of this on the on a bottom of that triangle is about seven eighths. So anywhere from three quarter to one inch is usually a good spread as far as to draw your lines. So we're going to go ahead and draw our lines in here and that gives us a nice spread between those lines so that we can get a larger basket stamp set. So what I'm going to do is first just start right here and I'm going to go from corner to corner. You could definitely do them straight if you want. I think they look much more pleasing if they're at an angle. And so I usually just go from corner to corner. I'm going to make my first line. And then before I move my ruler, I'm going to go ahead and catch the other side of that and put a line there. And I'm going to move it down to where we started. And I'm going to run me another line there. And then I'll go and I just keep doing that across whatever you're tooling. If it's a saddle fender or a wallet or a portfolio, you just keep doing that all the way across your tooling window. This square here that I've carved being my tooling window, that's where the tooling is going to inset. So once you do that and you've got your lines all the way across, then I go and cross it to the other side. We'll do the same thing. I'm going to put a line, line on this back side. Move that over. So we're doing the same thing, just going the other direction. And for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and do this front side, but if I'm going to do this back side as well, you go ahead and do that. Um, but we're going to try to keep this video short. Now you're going to want to take uh, the tools that you're going to need is going to be a swivel knife. Um, for anytime you're carving long straight lines, it is much more helpful to get the largest uh, blade that you can or that you have. You don't need to go buy a special blade for this. Um, but I find that the, the wider the blade in your swivel knife, the easier it is to keep those long straight lines um, nice and straight without any wobble. If you're using your normal, you know, little half inch or, or three eighths um, blade like this for like your floral carving, it's just a little easier to get off because it's a little quicker blade. So if you've got a larger blade, this is a great time to use that. But again, any swivel knife will work. You don't need anything special. Um, and then you're gonna need a beveler. And the largest beveler you have, as far as width goes, this is a Barry King large beveler, checkered stamped. Um, I think the checkered looks the best, but you could definitely use any beveler you want. And then I use a vertical lined thumbprint from Barry King, but something with vertical lines in there you could also use a, um, a flower center tool, a fl flower center liner, if you have one. The only problem is it's got a little concaved area right in there, but you could use the heel or you could sacrifice one of these just for this, this type of tooling and just square off the toe of this tool. And you'll see why here in a minute. But I find that just using a vertical line pear shader or thumbprint works just fine. So that's what we use there. So that's really all you need. You need a beveler and a vertical line pear shader. 
and a swivel knife. And then we'll go ahead, now we'll go ahead and carve these lines and I'm gonna carve those, trying to keep them as straight as I can. And you're just gonna carve them how they lay. There's no separation in the lines. You just carve all the way across. Just like if you were gonna do a cross hatching or something like that. And then we'll carve the other direction. So that's what we end up with. Very simple. Just some cross lines. You carve them all the way through. Don't worry about separating them as you get to a line that's going the other direction. Just carve through them. Make your cross hatching. Now, if you want to do a quilting pattern that was something that we call it, we've done for a long time, then you this would be the moment here where you would take a seed tool of your choice, whatever cedar you like, and put one of those in each one of those uh, intersections. And that'd be it. And that's a very nice, clean, simple, uh, covers a blank area really nicely and looks real attractive. But we're going to take this another step further by doing that large basket stand. So I'm going to miss this down one more time. Jabbering and it's getting a little bit dry on me. So now we'll take our large basket stamp. What you're going to do when you start this is you're going to just pick a spot, start where you want. I usually start on the longest line that I've got so I can kind of set the system up. So what I'm going to do is you just pick a side. You can either do this side or this side, either side you want to do. And you just bevel just that one section within that square. Okay, you got a bunch of squares. So you just bevel that one on that side. And now as we go up this line, we're going to switch sides. So now, we will, as we get to this next square, we're going to go the other side. And now as we get to this next square, you go to the other side. And that's it. I mean, that's you're just alternating which side you're beveling on all the way down. Now, when we go to the next line, I usually do the ones running this way first, okay? So we'll go to this next line. Now we have to be mindful of which side of the line we're gonna bevel on. So what I do is whatever the side directly across from it is, that's what we do on this side. So here we're beveling on the outside of this square. So we would do the same on this side. And now you would just do the opposite on all the other lines. So once you do that, as you can see, this one's on the inside of the square. So is the one directly across from it. This one's on the outside of the square. So is the one directly across from it here. So you just want to make sure just to check your work, make sure it's that way all the way around. And then these little ones in the corner, I just try to get just a little bit of a bevel in there. So then we'll go on this line. This is on the outside of this square. So we'll do this one on the outside. This one's on the inside. Okay, now as we've got those done, as we work these lines now, we're gonna have to look at where we are here. You wanna do the opposite on this, on these vertical lines here, than what you did here. So on this square right here, we did the inside of the line. So that means on these two, we're gonna do the outside. That's what's gonna give you that weave look. So once you get that done, now you can just run your lines just like we did this way. Okay, so now we just go the opposite side.
as we move down you can look across your line to see where you're supposed to be or look at the other side and see that you're doing the opposite it can kind of get a little bit confusing the more the bigger the area and the more lines you've got but if you just kind of be mindful of it and take your time you'll kind of get the hang of it as far as where you need to be um, the thing I've kind of learned on this is that for each square the two across will be the same bevel then the other two across here will be the opposite bevel that these are if you do that and they all match each other it'll all work out but like I said if you'll start off by doing that that middle line alternating which side you're beveling match this one and do that it'll kind of help you keep it all sorted out but it's a really fun style to play with okay now we can put our beveler up for right now and now we'll get our one thing I like to do is go ahead and bevel around my edge and I'm just using a push beveler here you could definitely bevel with a beveler So now I take my vertical line pair shader and where we're beveled down here where it's going or it looks like it now you can kind of begin to see the pattern and this one here looks like it's going underneath this one and this one's coming out from underneath this one and so on. So now you can kind of use this as your shader to kind of give it that shading effect and what I usually do is I set the toe down in the bevel and I'll start on one side and go all the way across just evenly. Bevel that nice and even, or shade that. Then I will take along the edge and I'll drag that just a little bit. Make sure you don't have any tool marks. And sometimes I'll give it one or two in the middle, where it's not, where this, this area here, the shaded area, doesn't look perfect. I want it to kind of do this, you know, where it's got some shape to it. And you'll just go along and So the way I like to do these as I'm doing any type of this basket stamping here is I try to work from where my position is or where I'm seated so I'm not turning my work too much and uh, even on something small like this. So I'll just do all the ones that I can get to here and shade those up. And right here on the edge, I just kind of lightly tap, just so it's got a little bit of texture right in there. Even these ones in the corner, I'll just try to get just a little bit in there. It probably doesn't matter, but I like just a little bit in there, just to give it a little color. And now we've gotten all the ones I can get from this side, so now I'll turn my work here, and now I'll work all the other ones. Just keep doing that until you've got all of your ones that are going underneath the the, the adjacent um, square. When you've got all those shaded, then we'll come back and we'll, I'll show you what we'll do next. But I'm going to speed through this and get, get all these done.
Okay, so we've gotten them all shaded. As you can see, that is starting to look pretty well like we want it to look, but now what I like to do next is I like to take my beveler and re-bevel all these lines and get a nice uh, crisp transition there, and that'll really segment all those pieces and make them look even more kind of uh, realistic. And so that's what I like to do now is just go in there and clean up our beveling and just really get a nice, clean, sharp bevel on all of those. You can see how much better that looks right there than this one here. This one looks a little shallow because you're kind of beating it up whenever you use that vertical line pear shader. So I like to go back through and just tighten those, those bevel lines up. It doesn't take that long and it really makes a difference. Okay, now that we've got all that re-beveled, you can see how now it looks almost like you cut that out and weaved it and then laid it in there. That's kind of what we're looking for is that kind of, you know, effect on there. And so now what I like to do is just take my swivel knife and just do some decorative cuts in here. It's just going to give it a little bit of a, say like a, um, like a ba actual basket that's weaved, you know, out of, uh, you know, uh, like wood stays kind of deal. You get a little bit of that wood grain or that cracking in there. And so what I do is just kind of do a few long ones, some little ones, and just be a little bit random with them. Don't let them have a, such a pattern. You may have one that's almost reaches the other side over there and just kind of flick them in there. They don't need to be very deep. They're just more of a grain accent than they are a real flowy decorative cut. All right. So that's pretty much it. That's uh, that's all of it. If you wanted to go back through um, after you're all done and just kind of clean up that edge border a little bit, that'd be fine. Um, you know, just to kind of, again, just kind of dress it up just a bit, clean everything up. But you can see how nice and simple that was. It, uh, on a bigger piece, you know, doing that saddle, some of those pieces, it was quite a bit. Uh, to do but on a wallet or a gunsling especially you could probably do this on a belt but you may want to narrow up the width of how far apart your lines are maybe maybe not maybe just angle them more on a belt um, you just have to play with that but this works really good on wallets portfolios anywhere you're wanting to cover a big area um, and not have it just smooth or just a quilting it's a really really good option um, i didn't invent this i've been watching it for years a lot of great toolers and craftsmen out there have used this type of um, basket stamping i'm not sure who the first one was to do it uh, but I've, I've always admired it and last year like i said we finally gave it a whirl and started doing it in some and i've been doing it a lot more on different projects thought you might want to know um, try it out on some scrap and see what you think about it and we'll see you all in the next video